Hey, welcome to Plants Are My Therapy. Today I'm going to be showing you my Sensevaria marginata. This is the snake plant that has the yellow margins and they're different from the regular snake plants. Um, I love this snake plant. This is my favorite of all the snake plants that I have and it's so architectural. It, it This version, the marginata, the one with the margins they twist and turn and look so sculptural and architectural and they do well in uh, this pot is probably almost a hundred years old in uh, ornate pots like this and I have them also in um, modern pots they coordinate well in anything it's this plant is a classic I have them all around my house and they don't take up that much space. This is the uh, regular version of the snake plant. Uh, it doesn't twist. It still looks nice. It doesn't swirl. It doesn't twist. But it still grows up straight. So you can put them in between furnitures or on a table and you don't have to worry about them bushing out. This plant I planted as scraps maybe about a year ago and I have a whole bunch of these plants along the back wall. I've propagated these plants and I've given them away as gifts. Uh, I don't like how this plant grows. I mean it doesn't, sh it doesn't, the composition is just off. Um, but it's still a beautiful plant. I put a layer of gravel on top of these uh, as toppers because I have a whole line of these uh, Sansevieria along the back wall and uh, so when I water them I just hose them down with the hose and the gravel keeps the dirt from being splashed out. Um, if you notice in the background my little helper is my youngest grandson and I'm trying to teach him critical thinking so I told him what I was doing I, I explained to him why I needed certain things and it's his job to figure out what I need without being asked and I'm so proud of him he he takes his job seriously and if you notice there's a layer of sand in this uh, pot in this uh, root ball uh, this was a spare plant. Uh, these are scraps that I just stuck into this pot and I didn't know if, uh, I didn't know the drainage quality of that old plant in there so I just put a layer of sand and then I put a porous, uh, I then I did my uh, Sansevieria mix in there and now I have to figure out how to divide this plant because well I want to give I want to give a plant away to a friend of mine. Her husband was uh, diagnosed with cancer recently and has undergone um, a cancer treatment so it's been rough and I know a lot of my friends have uh, cooked for them but it's difficult to cook for people who are on chemotherapy or radi radiation therapy because any type of smell will cause them to get nauseated and that's just making the problem worse and uh, you know there's monetary gifts that helps them out financially and then you know but these friends don't want to take uh, monetary gifts uh, so I'm gonna give them a plant um, so I want to have a nice plant I gotta figure out what composition I'm gonna get and I I'm cutting these plants I usually don't like messing with the root ball but for Sansevieria the leaves are so heavy that through a lot of trial and error I discovered that this method works best for me. I used to use those wooden dowels to keep the sense of area straight up in the pot but I have two grandsons and wooden dowels or any straight stick turns into swords and you know I was a kid and I had uh, brothers and and uh, we did the same thing but the problem is if you ever got hit by a wooden dowel it hurts so a lot of times these play fights turn into real fights and nowadays when a kid goes to school looking like he got a whipping 
you're going to be called in to answer a lot of embarrassing questions. Anyways, I use coffee filters at the bottom of my pots because I got a lot of them left over from when I used to make coffee. And I'm a firm believer of a layer of gravel on the bottom of the pots because it does help with drainage. My sense of air mixture is this um, two parts of potting soil, two parts of uh, perlite, not vermiculite. This is for aeration, drainage, and moisture. And uh, the Sansevieria, it likes to be watered, but it likes to be dried out. And for some reason, they like sand. Um, I found this out, uh, and I don't know why, because sand holds on to moisture as well. And I also put in some orchid bark because uh, for aeration, drainage, and the wood. Um, it absorbs some of the nutrients so the nutrients don't escape with the drainage water but also as it decays besides release, uh, releasing um, the nutrients that it held on to it um, also makes the soil a little looser so it doesn't end up with a solid brick now since this plant is going to be a gift I have to be a little bit more careful with the composition and um, these um, these sensiveras are very, very sturdy plants. So you can just stick them in the ground and they work. Uh, um, they grow. Just don't overwater them. Since I cut these roots, and since I've known from experience that these plants can stay up for two, three days after being cut and stuck into a pot and they'll still grow fine without even signs that they were cut, I'm not going to water this pot for probably two days. I don't want to risk going too far. Um, the top soil, I put the top layer of the soil, I put regular potting soil because my mixture has uh, perlite in it. And then with frequent waterings, the perlite will eventually float to the top, making a moist layer that would attract gnats or or slugs. And I press it down firm enough just to give the plant support but since I have the root ball in there it does great I mean look at this it's just it's not wobbly it's sturdy and um, it's gonna make a nice gift now I'm gonna cut up the rest of the root ball keep it an eye on a possible backup plant just in case the first plant doesn't work out Dividing the plant with the root ball makes the potting part much easier. So I put the coffee filter in the bottom and a layer of gravel because it does help with drainage and these plants love good drainage. I put two parts of potting soil and two parts of perlite, not vermiculite. This is for drainage, aeration, and moisture. And one part of sand because Sansevieria likes sand for some reason. And then I put about half a bark of, half a part of orchid bark because that keeps the nutrients from draining out with the drainage water and it also stops the root ball or the soil inside the pot turn it into one big brick then comes the fun part well where I try and figure out a good composition a good plant composition because this is going to be my backup um, gift to my friend and or maybe I'll just give them two of these, but uh, I love Sansevieria. Uh, they are really good plants. Actually, they're rated as one of the best air purifiers. It can handle low light really well. And even in low light, they still metabolize oxygen. So uh, all around, this is one of the better plants to give to, you know, well, to give to people and uh, especially to people on chemotherapy uh, my friends my friend said that um, it clears up the air in her house even after she cooks something the air seems to uh, clear up faster so anyways I tap in the size of the pot to make sure that air, there's no air pockets because uh, even though these plants can handle being uprooted for a while that the air pockets will will kill them 
the top layer of soil is uh, just regular potting soil, so I don't have a layer of uh, vermiculite or perlite. And this composition looks great. This one may end up being the gift, or maybe both of these plants will be gifts to them. And since these are going to be gifts, then I top these off with decorative gravel. Uh, this decorative gravel actually makes a nice finishing touch. And, but the only thing about uh, topping the plants off with decorative gravel or any type of topper is that it's going to affect uh, the rate of evaporation. So that's going to affect your watering schedule or watering routine. But uh, Sansevieria's, um, they're very forgiving if you forget to water them. Just don't overwater them. And I want to I want to show you how fast it is uh, to uh, pot these plants. Uh, with the root balls in it. Uh, I try and teach my grandchildren as well as my kids that uh, whenever you do something you you try and figure out a way how to do it better and keep on doing it better to become more efficient and more productive and um, I think I perfected or got the most uh, uh, efficient way to uh, plant the Sansevieria uh, especially uh, since now that my routine will be to uh, divide the plant with the root ball. And look how fast it is. I don't have to worry about uh, uh, patting it down. I do have to pat down the, the soil firm enough uh, because, well, you want to make sure the plant is secure. Um, and then uh, I do top off the plant with uh, sand because that will help the evaporation rate and th these plants are going to be outside and sometimes I'm not going to remember to or have time to water them. But look how efficient it is to pot a plant that has been divided with its root ball. Uh, not all plants you can divide uh, with the root ball because uh, not all plants can tolerate it but the Sansevieria plant tolerates it well. I hope you were able to learn from my experience and my trial and error and uh, I hope you like these videos or this video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel and I hope to have uh, pleasant conversations or positive conversations in the comments section. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, Aloha. Oh, oh wait uh, don't go yet because uh, at the end I'm going to show you the finished product I, I guess I was a little bit too hurried Ta -da! actually I stole that from crazy plant guy um, I'm not being derogatory that's the name of this guy's YouTube channel crazy plant guy I think his name is Christian anyway these are the plants that I'm going to give away as gifts I'm probably going to give both of them to them. I'm, uh, I'm very happy the way it turned out. And then this plant, well, it doesn't look that good, but it's going to look good later. Uh, the composition of this plant looks like it's going to do well, and it'll be easy to give this plant away as a gift. I can just put the topper gravel on top of uh, these pots, and it'll blend it nice with the sand. And this guy was a leftover, but from what I've learned from planting the leftovers, that they end up turning into the most nicest plants. So thank you and aloha.